Sonny, first of all, how are you feeling ahead of uh, the big fight on Friday night live on BT Sport? Yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone's ever come to a press conference and said they've really been struggling or, or camp's been hard. I mean, every camp is hard, but it's, it's, it's been as good as it could have gone. I mean, I want to thank Frank, I want to thank MTK and, and BT. I've had a lot of notice for this fight. Um, the people inside the offices know that I've taken short notice fights, I've mm. taken hard title fights, four and a half weeks notice and, and less than that. But this one, I've had a nice 13-week run-up. Um, I've known the opponent, the, the scale of the fight, the, the event for a very, very long time. So I've had time to prepare meticulously. I mean, my trainer's done a great job as always, Grant. Um, you know, the, the team's very strong. And, yeah, I'm just looking forward to uh, welcoming myself to a world scene on, on, on Friday night. Speaking of, um, of preparation, how much are you missing the Monster Munch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know what? That's, that's funny because... The girl who I was with at the time, she's got a daughter and she loved Monster Munch. So two weeks before Marcel, I can remember, I think my weight was good and then I went down and smacked three bags. And then I just thought, why have I done that? You know, just when you can, you do. But with this one, I know I can't, so I haven't. So. Talk, well, talk to me about those changes because you have made significant changes diet-wise and training-wise in order to prepare for this big world title fight on Friday. Well, I need to look like him on the post up because, I mean, the, they've done great on the Photoshop skills. I've never looked that rough in my life until now. Um, but he must have foreseen the future. So, nah, it's just, um, it's more cognitive dissonance. It's, 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 I've, I've always known what to do and how to get there, but using my talent, I've always allowed myself to cut corners when perhaps I shouldn't have been. Um, I've always trained hard. I'm always very, very fit. I'm, I'm, I'm always in the gym. I love sparring. I love training it. I don't do anything else. So if I don't go to the gym in between camps, I'm pretty much sitting around the house all day. Do you know what I mean? I don't, there's, no, there's nothing else too much apart from having my, my son or now sons. There, there's not, not more too much to me than boxing, if I'm honest. So it's been, it's been easy to make the little adjustments. Shout out to my, um, my strength and conditioning coach, Reese at Elite Step, Elite Step. He's been cooking for me the last 13 weeks. Um, so I haven't needed a bird this, this camp, and, I, and, and I'm doing just fine. And he linked up with my, uh, my, my food sponsor, Rendell's, up in Scotland. So shout out to them. But together, them to have sort of put all the food on my plate for me, I haven't even have to think about what times I'm eating. They, they've already told me all of that stuff. So it's, it's, it's been a good, good run-up. I've dedicated and committed myself to it, and I'm hoping that those efforts will show on uh, Friday. You just mentioned fatherhood there obviously during this camp you became a father for a second time talk me through it talk me through how much extra fire in the belly that gives you yeah i mean obviously i knew for a long time but no one else really did until 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 bobby was here um yeah it's just one of those things but something i'm made up with i love how he turned out he looks a lot more like me than my last one i mean my last boy chance my oldest one he's so beautiful people think he's a little girl this one looks a bit more like me, you know what I mean? So take that as you will, especially from the side profile. He's got a little overbite and that, so, yeah, I'm happy with how he's turned out. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's something that I've, uh, I've loved and always wanted to do, always wanted to be a young dad, I mean, and, and I feel like I've taken to it in my stride. I had uh, a lot of time spent since he's been born. Um, he was staying overnight with me and then my other son, you know, quite a few nights last week, so... It's been good, but for me, it's just, I'm not sitting there feeling sorry for myself. Why me? Why can't I, I put myself in these positions? But being a parent is something I love. I mean, hopefully taking that IBF world title, getting a picture next to them too, is something I can always remind them of. You know, when they get cheeky, when they're 14, 15, like, I was champion of the world in once upon a time, so I'll be champion of the household as well, hopefully. But no, nah, it's just, it's a blessing, it really is, having two happy, healthy, beautiful sons. Is what more can I ask for? Absolutely. And, for, and from a professional point of view, an extra driver as well, because, like you say, as a, as a young man coming through in the amateurs, you're doing it for yourself, your own dreams and ambitions, and now you're, you're teaching a better way for, for, the, for your offspring coming through. Yeah, and more mouths to feed. They're expensive, you know, kids. And, 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 and I think having kids has really made me appreciate all the stuff that I had growing up and, and the opportunities that I had. I mean, one thing I could never say about my dad before me is... 
there was ever a lack of effort that went into me or my brother. I mean, he was, he was very 100% full tilt from very young. I mean, we used to run up to 30, 36 miles a week when we was like 13, 14 year old, and that's no lie. Much more than I do now even. Um, but one thing I never had was a lack of effort, so that's what I'm trying to, you know, push on to, push on to them. I mean, chance is only two and a half, and he's already started his, uh, his budding football career. I mean, I've been taking him every Sunday you know, through the last month since they started opening again. And I think I enjoy it more than him. But, um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good to make their memories. And you enjoy the journey. Too many people focus on their, their destination to make them happy. But if you're enjoying the day-to-day, whether that's camp, whether that's dieting, whether that's going and sparring, these are the, the best times of our life. And a lot of boxers forget that. But oh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying every second of it. I mean, I'm enjoying walking in seeing big pictures of myself on the poster next to a good friend and and, and without sounding a bit too cliche, a hero of mine, I mean, I've always been a massive fan of whatever I'm in. So when I was an amateur, even from a young age, I knew all the world-level fighters amateur. I knew all the Olympians, the, the world champions, uh, the ABAs. The, I knew everyone. And I weren't really that interested in pros at the time. It weren't until my brother got into the pro game and then I got into the pro game that I sort of, put my interest on that now and now perhaps I don't really watch the amateurs no more but now I'm obsessed with the pro game so it's good to be sort of recognised as the, the, the top tier I mean by just challenging for a world title but let's make my claim on Friday become one of the the handful of British world champions one of the two Frank Warren promoted world champions next to Big Tyson and and I'll be where I thought I deserved to be for a long long time uh, last time you fought at this weight was September 2019. You've had a couple, obviously, up at Superfly. We've seen on social media this week that you fancy maybe even going lower, mate, because you're in such good nick at the moment. Where is your optimum weight? Is it this one? Well, I don't really know, to be honest, because I've never really applied myself like I have this time. And if I'm honest, I'm eating four meals a day. I've eaten two steaks uh, yesterday. I've had a steak and three eggs already today, and I've got two more meals coming up. I've never been like this on fight week, and my weight is, isn't... Normally, I used to look at food and near the end, I think, oh, that's weight, that is. I can't eat that, do you know what I mean? So it's done a bit more properly this time, and I think I jumped off the scales at 51.8 yesterday, and that's under the super fly weight limit, and normally, because of how I do things, the, the, the corners that I cut, you see me very drawn, you see my eyes a bit poppy, and I'm under super fly weight right now as I stand, and yeah, I look different to, to what I have been on, on, on the scales, so... Yeah. I probably could, you know, drop down to 48.9. I remember I was a 49 kilo fighter as, a, as an amateur for a long few years. And I mean, if I lose, I'll just blame the weight and then move down. I mean, that's what everyone else does, doesn't it? You know I mean, so, yeah, nice. But I think flyweight, I'm, I'm quite big for flyweight. I'm not small. I think you'll see the size of me compared to Morty there, especially height wise. I mean, he's probably got much bigger biceps than me, but uh, do you know what I mean? I've got to use every advantage. You've been calling for this one. You've been calling his name for quite some time, and now obviously we're here. Talk me through the process as to why you've called for him specifically. Um, one, realism. I mean, he at the time when I first started was the only other MTK signed world champ. Um, two, I've seen him up close and personal. I've seen him spar. So, I mean, uh, he's logged up into the, the computer up there, and, and, and I learned probably enough from that than, than what I needed to think. Oh, do you know what I mean? When it's time, I'll, I'll be able to take him. But that's no slight on him. He's a, he's a great, great world champion. I mean, I don't need to sell him any more than, than the Frank Warren media team. I've been selling him, you know, just to let everyone know that he's a proper, proper world champion. But I don't know. I just wanted the best. And he's been ranked number one ring magazine for a little bit now. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want. I mean, I'm not 100% sure how those ring magazine works with the ratings. But surely if you beat the man, you become the man. I mean, that's what Tyson Fury's career taught me anyway lineal champ and all of that so yeah I'm, I'm trying to be the best at the weight and then from being number one I can then start looking down and picking up the other champions you know what I mean and um the ring magazine has always been a big big dream of mine so my first world title fight I go against number one and then go for the the unification against number two or three and get that title on the line that's that's probably my thinking more than anything, to be honest. I, I want to be at the top of the tree, and I want to be recognised as such. So there's no point in me using all my high rankings, and you know, I'll second with the WBO, sixth for the IBF, ninth for the WBC. I could have kept chipping away, having easier touches fights, securing nice little paydays that are moderately growing up, but 
I want to test myself. I want to be known as one of them fighters that always takes the best, hardest fights, the biggest fights that my name, my platform will allow me to have, regardless of how this fight goes, because that's, that, that's uh, my goal of my career. I've always been quite known around the gyms as someone that would jump in against anyone, last minute, whatnot. I've had injuries. I've had two hands bust before fights, and then I've still jumped in. And that mentality has helped me get through 10 rounds when two ankles snapped, etc. I mean, two ligaments in my ankle snapped, etc. I've, I've got a no-quit, regardless mentality. And, and, you know, I think I'll learn a lot more about myself in the 12 rounds on Friday night than probably a large proportion of the rest of my career put together. So that's why I'm looking forward to it. I think a lot of fans will emulate that, mate, as to, uh, as to why you've become a bit of a fan favourite, that type of attitude. You mentioned there that you've had a look at him in sparring. So everybody knows that you, you have worked with him in the past in, in, uh, in the Ukraine. What did you learn from that, those moments? That he's a very good fighter. I'll be real with you. He's a very, very good fighter. I mean, me and Jay did the first spar. We had a good spar, both of us, against Dalekay. And he's a top fighter as well, the WBA. Um, and then Maruti comes in two days later, and I think he jumped in maybe third, I think. I think we might have went first, and he jumped in last. And it was just a bit like, whoa, OK, yeah, he's good. Do you know what I mean? Very, very good, very strong, because... We was sort of seen... Dalekane, to us, was sort of physically stronger than us. You know, he was probably... When he was gritting his teeth and thinking, he was probably the bully, or he was probably faster, sharper. But then when Maruti got in the ring, it's like... It was like a different fighter, Dalekane. He was, he was moving around. He was moving like me, do you know what I mean? He's like... So he showed me enough that I, what I need to be doing. But what he did show me is Dalekane, who's probably a little bit slower than me, probably better at letting his hands go in the pocket than me, but... He moved a hell of a lot and had a lot of success against Moretti when he was moving. So straight away it showed the sort of, you know, the styles make fights and whatnot. And obviously I've got very young, fresh legs. And, and hopefully Moretti's ones are very old and slow. I mean, that's what I'm hoping to find out by the fourth or fifth round, that they start slowing down. If not, mine will just have to speed up more and, and, and let him hit me even less. Do you know what I mean? But like I said, he's a great champion. He's a great person as well, someone that we shared breakfast, lunch and dinner and went on walks and trips around Ukraine and, and, and whatnot. He's a really nice person. I mean, it's a shame that he's not here just yet, but he's someone I look up to and respect and, and admire. And if I could have a career anywhere near as good as he is and has been, I mean, lucky for me, I'm British and we've got better foundation for platform than um, perhaps he's had in South Africa. He's criminally underrated and underappreciated, not just around the world, but in his own country. I mean... His last fight in, in December, which fell through, fell through because I think the show didn't sell enough. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that, when would that even happen in, 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 in Britain? The promoter would take the, the downfall before they'd let... You know what I mean? That's even more embarrassing, do you know what I mean? But it just is what it is for him. And, and I'm glad that my team and my promoter has managed to put together an offer that Moriti seems and deems acceptable at this stage of his career. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm glad that we've got him over in my hometown. I know he's flying in today, so hopefully he's a bit jet-lagged come Friday. But no, no, I'm really looking forward to it. And, and he has my utmost respect as a, as, a, as a fighter, as a champion, and as a human being. And I genuinely mean that. I mean, I know people typically have a, a view of me and, and how I operate in certain, you know, certain divisions of, 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 of walks of life. But, you know, I'm... I'm I show a lot of respect and I have a lot of respect for fighters, especially ones that have done it the hard way. I mean, I think me turning pro and having to box on three small hall shows was the doing it the hard way. He's had a world champion for, for however many years and he's had no unifications. He can't even fight in his own country, do you know what I mean? So that's the real, real hard way. I'm, I can't even emphasise with that, really. But at the same time, all the niceness goes out the window on Friday and, and, and Britain's got a new world champion. Finally, Sonny, for people that are going to be tuning in on, on BT Sport and ESPN over in the States, tell us how you see this fight going. Well, hopefully, I mean, not for the fans, but hopefully for me as uneventful as possible. I mean, <laughs> the way I box, I could have quite a lot of fans there. I could have sold 200 tickets, and after the second or third round, it was quite monotonous. Do you know what I mean? It's because I'm constantly scoring and, and doing what I need to do, and usually the jumps up on the edge of the seat is when I get caught, do you know what I mean? So... Hopefully it's, it's, it's nice and uneventful for 12 rounds and I get a wide points win. I mean, I just want it to... I just want there to be no outside talking points. I want the winner to be the winner. I want the right man to get his hand lifted. That's important for me. Um, 
I mean, it's been no secret if you look at the British boxing recently. The judge has not been the best, let's be real. Um, and I don't want any of that. I don't need any of that. Um, and if there ever was, I'm not saying this time, but if there ever was a time I'll come out the ring and thought I wasn't on the right side of the decision, I'd say I'm an honest fighter. And um, I just hope for the both of us that we come out, get to see our kids like, happy and healthy. I know it's cliche, but, you know, I mean, I do hope I win, but... There's, there's bigger things than boxing and, and for me I think it has to be fair do you know what I mean and he's already probably gone through quite a lot just bouncing around Covid restrictions I know he's had to go to one country and then fly in just because of the whole world what's going on right now but yeah I'm hoping that I've got the best majority that we can physically have at 38 years old you know he hasn't been as active as possibly he would like to be but I just, I'm just hoping for a good clean fair fight with a fair decision to go with it and no talking point that's not Wow, Sonny is world level. That's what I'm hoping for. That's Sonny done what he told us we were going to do. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, just looking forward to it. Well said, mate. Well said, and I think we all emulate exactly what you just said there. Uh, so there you go. He's built it up. It's going to be an absolute cracker. 7 p.m. BT Sport on Friday night, the 30th. Just to remind you, it's a Friday night show, this. Make sure you come and join us. If you're watching in the States, uh, it's from 4 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a cracker. The IBF Flyweight Championship of the World between Maruti, Delaney and this man here, Sonny Edwards.